Hello, my name is Andy and I am the village idiot and the man with the car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Now, I'm back in Bassett Law today and the last village you saw me walk around was Clayworth and this one is very similar because it also has access to the Chesterfield Canal which is over there. We'll see that at the very end of this video but I'm outside a pub called the Boat Inn at the moment aptly named considering it's right on the banks of the canal. But to start with, I'm heading this way through the main village in the parish of Hayton. Hayton is a small village located four miles northeast of Retford. According to the 2001 census, it had a population which included the hamlet of Tilne, which we'll talk about later, of 386. This decreased marginally to 385 in the 2011 census. For a small village, it does okay with amenities. It's served by the 97 and 197 buses known as the Bassett Law Bells. The village sits with its eastern back to Hollins Hill, which at 223 feet is the highest point in the area. Its western boundary is drawn by the River Idol. It's a linear village about a mile in length running from north to south. Demographically, it's made up of 97.1% white British citizens. One of its most delightful assets is its close alignment to the Chesterfield Canal, which affords wonderful walks that in turn link to a large network of local footpaths. Don't forget though, if you come here and you do attempt to walk any of them, this is a farming settlement, so the paths can be muddy in wet weather and some public rights of way pass through private land. So Hayton effectively is one long road with houses on either side. Uh, there are a couple of little offshoots, one of them includes the church, which I'm not quite at yet, but I will get to it uh, very shortly. And uh, even though um, you might think with it being one long road, it's just going to be a case of walking up it and then walking back the other way, that's actually not the case because the uh, Chesterfield Canal runs adjacent to, H to Hayton and it runs that way behind these houses. Uh, so when I eventually get to the end of this road, I'll be taking a right turn towards the canal to pick up the path to walk back to where I started at the boat inn. Here's a book exchange. We've not seen one of these for a while. This one was loaded with things and it had a small notice board inside it, which wasn't the easiest one ever to stick a TVI card to, as you're about to discover. These cards are quite thick. <laughs> oh, there we go. I don't want to obscure that one too much with my card, so hopefully people can see both. If any Hayton locals are watching this, if you want to, I've, I've only got one hand here because I've got one hand on the camera. <laughs> so you know, if you if you want to make that a little bit more neat, I'd be appreciative. <laughs> be very appreciative. Certainly a pretty one. Hayton has an average house price of three hundred and eighty-nine thousand pounds. So I've just spotted something really interesting, but I've got no chance of getting to it. Uh, behind me, there's a house right there, set back from the road. And in it, in the garden there, you might be able to see a little blue structure. That's a village pump, I think it is anyway, from this distance. The history of this parish was recorded in a booklet published in 1985 entitled Hayton, 1762 to 1914, a portrait of a North Nottinghamshire country parish from enclosure to the Great War. It was researched and written by Dr. Rosemary E. Anderson, who left Hayton in 2006. Some of the information in this video comes from that booklet via the Parish Council's website. 
Hayton once had a school which, although built to hold 60, never held more than about 25 pupils. I believe this now to be the village hall seen here. Hayton also had a Wesleyan Methodist chapel built in 1823 on a piece of land which cost just £2 and a building which cost £140 with money raised by the villagers. At the village hall there's another notice board and also a map on the wall. Guess what I found? I found a map of Hayton. Here we go. So here's Hayton. Now as you can see Hayton Village is in this southern portion of the boundary. So this black line here is the boundary. Uh, up here is pretty much all farmland. And there's the main road, which I've been walking down. And uh, when I reach uh, the border with Clarborough here, that's where I shall turn and head for this footpath, heading back up there. Much like in Clayworth, Hayton's reliance on agriculture has become less and less over time. New agricultural machinery and technology means now it's less labour intensive as more and more machinery has been introduced onto the farms. The main crops here were wheat, barley, peas and beans historically. Depending on the time of year, Hayton has an abundance of blackberries, sloes, damsons and rose hips growing wild. It is and has always been a very self-contained village. So in the far distance there, that's the church here in Hayton. And looking at the map, I figured it was easier to access that by, uh, by the footpath, which I keep talking about, which runs down the side of the Chesterfield Canal, because it's easier to walk from that footpath to the church, because it's closer than walking down that street that you saw a minute ago um, near the village hall. So we'll catch that on the way back up. I'm almost at the border with Clarborough now. In war times, it had 16 farms, two blacksmiths, three shops, two pubs, and also a dressmaker, carpenter, wheelwright, and tailor. There was even a gunsmith. Okay, I've walked the full length of Hayton village and I'm now at the border between Hayton and the parish of Clarborough and Wellham. And I'm on Smeath Lane. Here's Smeath Lane. Now, interestingly, this side of the road, that is Clarborough and Wellham Parish. That side of the road is still Hayton. Smeath Lane is the boundary between the two here and the boundary runs right down the middle. So how, how cool is that? Two villages out here in rural Bassett Law. You'd expect to see this kind of thing in a more urbanized area, wouldn't you? But absolutely not. No, that is Hayton Parish over there. And that is Clarborough and Wellham. Make no mistake about it, this is certainly a unique feature when you consider how small Hayton and neighbouring Clarborough actually are, and it does make you wonder why they aren't combined into a single civil parish. I am led to believe that both Haytonians and the residents of Clarborough consider the two villages to be one and the same for the most part. Now let's go to the canal. There were three market gardens in Hayton at one time, mainly employing women. They transported their goods to markets in Sheffield and Leeds by train, but a major transport artery here was unsurprisingly the canal, which generally transported heavier goods on canal barges. Once again, we're alongside the Chesterfield Canal, joining the waterway at a bridge right on the border between Hayton and Clarver and Wellham. Unlike Clayworth, this time we're heading north along the bank, as opposed to the southerly direction we took in that episode. You know, now that I've reached the canal, it's all of a sudden gone very chilly for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, uh, over in the very, very far distance there, you will not be able to see this, I promise you. I can see a lake, and that lake, I think, I'm not totally sure on this, I think that's Tilne Lake because Hayton involves, uh, the parish uh, includes, I should say, um, a small hamlet called Tilne, which on the map looks to be uh, nothing more than just a couple of farms, but there's also a lake there, and I think that's what I can see. I'm not totally sure, but I think that is Tilne Lake. I also believe there's a quarry out there as well. After Clayworth towards Hayton, i.e. the opposite direction to which we're walking here, the canal continues southeasterly for about three quarters of a mile and then curves south towards Retford. As it does so, it leaves behind the many cuttings and the wooded countryside through which it's travelled and passes through open farmland before it reaches the bridge where we began our route at the Boat Inn. We'll get to that at the very end of this walk. 
In terms of bridges, there are actually five bridges in quick succession here as the canal travels through Hayton and into Calabria. The parish church of St Peter now as we leave the canal bank briefly. The information for the church here is taken from Rosemary Anderson's booklet. The church would appear to have originally consisted of a Norman stone built nave and chancel dating from around 1120. A portion of this structure is still to be found within the north wall of the nave. At the end of the 12th century the south aisle was constructed and the arcade consisting of three round arches was built. Now here's a sad but very interesting piece of history for you. Three men from Hayton never returned from the First World War. One of the three men, Robert Emson, was the son of the blacksmith here in Hayton. His is one of the names inscribed on the Thiepval Memorial on the Somme battlefield. There's a war memorial in the churchyard, as you might expect. Okay, so the rest of my route around Hayton is just basically me walking along the bank of the Chesterfield Canal, which means it's about time you guys had a picture bit before I get to my last thing here in the village. Here it comes right now. Now we're back onto the canal bank and the rest of the walk is simply just the canal from here to the bridge with the B1403 at the boat in. On the way I noticed some rather interesting things, this wooden walkway being one of them. This one I almost missed, it's a small stone pillar with the number 34 inscribed on it, seemingly some kind of memorial to Lorraine Barton. You then pass under another of these picturesque canal bridges, one of the five on this stretch. I have absolutely no idea what this is a reference to. <laughs> it looks like it's some kind of religious reference. I don't know, maybe some people out there would probably like to explain that. Ruination, one mile that way. Redemption, a thousand miles that way. I must admit, that's one of the uh, most unique things I've ever seen. And finally, we reach the boat inn. How cool a pub is this one, folks? How many pubs do you know with a terrace leading out from the beer garden onto a canal bank? We're back at the bridge now where the B1403 crosses the canal. At this point, I wanted to capture the picnic area next to it, but my camera died, and then this happened. Okay, so it's started to rain now, uh, which means I've retreated into the car uh, to film the outro for the Hayton episode. Another one down in Bassett Law, a nice, uh, a nice pleasant one, nice pleasant walk uh, along the Chesterfield Canal. This has been the Parish of Hayton, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.